Hey guys, welcome back to the video. We are 132 days from the election, which is around four months. So it is coming up very, very close. And still in the middle of the summer, we see that Trump has an advantage over Joe Biden. There had been some polls that had been recently coming out and I did make a previous video that you should check out explaining why Trump does have the edge, but there has been a few more polls added and a few more metrics to take a look at before looking at a specific poll that do show that Trump is still having that advantage and that I, he's actually gaining and that he actually is at his best spot so far in this cycle. Before we continue, please like, subscribe, and comment. Share all your feedback in the comment section down below. And the debate will be tomorrow, so that's gonna be a very, very important event. And I will make a video coming out shortly after, so please hit that bell when you guys subscribe so you know when my reaction video will come out. So as we can see from this page over here on Real Clear Politics, Trump has actually ex expanded his lead once again to plus 1.3. He is at 46.5, Biden is at 45.2, and we can see the recent four polls have had him up or tied and after June and the conviction, a lot of people were saying that this will tighten up, and it did actually tighten up a bit in the polls. On 538, even uh, Joe Biden did take that lead, but right now it is back to a tie, and I expect Trump to retake the lead in 538 in the next few in the next few days or week. But as we can see here from Real Color Politics, Trump has expanded his lead once again, where he leads by up to one percentage point back to where it was at the late stages of May, even like up to the beginning late stages of april so this is very good for his campaign that once again he is leading by a considerable amount and that push for biden to catch up is really starting to falter especially with a very surprising poll coming out of quinnipiac rasmussen and cbs and morning console all these show a trump gain we can see here in quinnipiac probably the most left-leaning pollster uh democrat kind of it's kind of like a democrat in colonel it's very very left leaning trump leads by four before last month trump, biden had led by one and every single one of these besides one other poll conducted by quinnipiac biden has had a lead sometimes by outside of margins of errors but now now we see that trump has a four point lead going back to morning council now it's a tie once again in rasmussen trump leads by the largest margin all the way back since last year on CB on CBS, we can see Trump has not lost support. On Fox is the only, only, only poll that we see Trump losing support after that. But we gotta see what the next one is. If we go down to Marist, always showing Biden up. Now they show a tie in the popular vote. So this is what I mean by that 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 failed Biden comeback. It might have, you know worked a little bit for a week but as i expected it has not changed the outcome of the map too much and before we get into that quinnipiac poll i want to go through that donald trump is at his all-time high on polymarket polymarket is probably the largest trading site betting site for the presidential election and right now trump's at 59 percent biden 34. Trump has actually hit 70% chances in, in uh, Nevada. He's at 61 in Arizona. He's way past 70 in North Carolina. He's almost at 70 in Georgia. And now Wisconsin, for the first time, has hit 50-50. Michigan, 53-47. And Pennsylvania, tightening almost a 50-50 race. We can see from this map that this is actually the largest lead that Trump has ever had throughout the cycle, which means that people now are more confident than ever that Donald Trump will be the victor of this election, where he has been skyrocketing to almost 60%. We can see here 61% chance that Republicans will win the presidency, 73% chance in the Senate, and the House is basically tied. They give almost a one in two chance of Republicans having a sweep, and this is not based of a few people. This is based off of thousands and thousands, maybe even millions of people People betting their money on who they think is going to win so it's very interesting to say that donald trump does have that lead and usually some people even say that the betting markets are an even better factor of predicting elections than the polls and right now it's pretty profound who is ahead but also we can see on some of these models that donald trump also has a very similar margin of winning 63 percent chance of winning 37 percent chance that biden wins on the economist we see a similar story where trump has a 70 percent chance of winning on on, D, on uh, 538 the most left-leaning one it's still around a 50 50 race and on DD, ddhq donald trump usually has between a 56 to 60 percent chance of winning the election as well so we can see that donald trump does have that 
advantage. Well, let's go to this Quinnipiac poll now, where they show that Trump pulls ahead of the presidential race. A vast majority of voters plan to watch the debate, which is very important. Only 16% of are open to changing their choice for president. So let's scroll down here and take a look at some of these factors. And I'm going to link this down also. You guys can definitely see this. It's important here that uh, 55 percent of voters think that trump should not be sentenced based on his guilty verdict and that's the majority right there obviously a majority of republicans and a majority of democrats by far 59 to 36 think trump should not be sentenced and still 70 17 percent of democrats say he should not be sentenced Meanwhile, on Hunter Biden, 51% of voters think President Biden's son should be sent to prison. And on Biden's approval, it is at 38 to 58, which is pretty much an all-time low according to this poll and according to the most polls. And if we scroll down, we can see some of the more cross tabs here. Once again, Biden at 45, Trump at 49. An important factor to look at here is independence. How will independents be voting? Right now, they say 51% Trump, 41% Biden. Men, Trump's winning by a considerable amount. Women, Biden's winning by a much more narrow amount. Going down to the age is very interesting. 18 to 34 year olds, Biden is only up by two. 35 to 49, Trump up by 11. 50 to 64, Trump up by 10. And 65 plus, Biden up by three. And this is an interesting metric that we're seeing. And this is why Trump has been really pulling ahead of this election cycle, even according to the most liberal pollsters. It's because that young voters are shifting a lot more to the right than these older voters are shifting to the left. And it's pretty cool we see here also that whites still favor Trump almost 20 points. Blacks, Trump's gaining. He's at almost 20%. And the most you know, crucial change of all, Hispanics, where Trump is within 10 points of Joe Biden. On some issues now, we can see extremely important issues for president. On the economy, Trump is beating him two to one. Climate change obviously favors uh, Joe Biden as well as abortion, but by not by much, preserving democracy. Uh, and the Supreme Court, Trump convictions, but Trump leads heavily on uh, immigration. Again, he leads heavily on the Israel-Hamas war. And the Supreme Court is not that far off. Scrolling down even more, if we factor in Kennedy, Trump leads by 6% as Kennedy takes 11% of support away, which ends up hurting Biden more than Donald Trump. Another important metric to look at in this poll is the favorable ratings of both candidates. Right now, Donald Trump has a 44% favorable rating and a 51% unfavorable rating, while Joe Biden has a 38% favorable rating with a 57% unfavorable rating. So basically, he is like twice as unpopular as Donald Trump, which is with the complete opposite in the 2020 election, where we saw that Joe Biden had a much higher favorable rating than Donald Trump, and which helped him secure that election in 2024. So all these metrics in this poll and other polls conducted recently have shown that Trump is in a pretty good situation, a pretty good condition. And let's actually fill out a map, a more recent map of my prediction based on all the data that we just came, that we just found. And let's also make sure we include the five-way race between Trump, Biden, Kennedy, West, and Stein, where Trump is up by 2.6% up from 1.3 on June 19th. So he has been gaining in the two-way race and in the five-way race. And we're gonna take into consideration this Quinnipiac poll that had him up by six, and also the misses in this day of history where Biden was up by 9.5, Clinton was up by 6.7. If we remember, Democrats in both years were overestimated by an average of two to three percentage points on the national scale. So let's just say that Trump is up right now in the popular vote by upwards of four percentage points, according to the polls. Let's be a little more fair and put it at around three and a half, just in case those polls don't overestimate the Democrats as much as they used to. Let's get to this map now where we're going to fill out the safe states for Democrats. It's going to be similar states as usual. We're going to have every state in the West, Hawaii, Illinois. We're going to have all these states up in the East Coast and Maine's first district. Keep in mind, I expect the state of New Jersey and the state of New York to be a lot closer, similar to what this model shows over here. We can go over the states in terms of margins and we can find that New Jersey if I find it over here, is not going to be as safe as it used to. The state of New Jersey is not as safe. 
as we can see here, it's only a plus 10.3 for Joe Biden. That's actually in the likely column, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give him around a 12, 13 point margin, around a 15 point margin in the state of New York. And in the state of New York right now, the polls actually do show also a pretty you know, vast tightening compared to the last election where they showed Joe Biden only up by 16 percentage points. But anyways, moving on to the Republican safe states, we're going to have Alaska and all these Mountain West states. Iowa and Ohio will be included. All of Nebraska except the 2nd District. All of the Deep South and Maine's 2nd Congressional District will be going back in that safe margin. Uh, Republicans definitely have a lower floor when it comes to those safe states, but adding Texas and Florida in that likely column will bring them up to 219. These states are very safe for Donald Trump, and even the models predict that they will go to Donald Trump by 7.7% in florida and 10.1 percent in texas which is pretty similar to my predictions i think both will be go between eight and ten percentage points especially if donald trump wins the popular vote by a projected two to three percentage points according to the polls moving on to some likely states for democrats the states that have over him by six points or higher i only have the state of colorado and that's because I believe the state of New Mexico is going to get closer. Even this 6.4% chance does show a tightening. 7.9% on Colorado is a lot tighter than that 13.5% that Donald, the Joe Biden won by in the 2020 election. And for some lean states for Donald Trump right now, I give him the states of North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and the states of Nevada all on that lean column right now. I think Donald Trump holds a 2% lead or higher in all of these four states. And all of these pollsters, all of these markets do agree that Donald Trump is dominating in the Sun Belt. Let's go over the state of Arizona, 4.8%. Georgia, 5.3%. Nevada, 27 and the state of North Carolina, 5.9. All of these states are in the lean column according to these pollsters, these averages, and these models that predict elections. So it's very interesting to see that metric. Democrats will be taking a few lean states in their column, however, like the states of Minnesota, New Mexico, Virginia, and Maine. And I actually included New Hampshire in that safe column. That is my mistake. It will be going to that lean column. And all these four states are probably going to vote similar to each other. And this model also shows that where New Hampshire is 2.3, Minnesota is 2.6, Virginia is 4.1, Maine is 2.9, New Mexico is 6.4. All of these except New Mexico are in that like lean margin for Joe Biden on my map. And I will include New Mexico in that lean margin because I expect a lot of the Hispanic trends that are carrying out in Texas, Arizona, and Nevada will also carry out to a lesser extent in the state of New Mexico. Also, we'll be adding Nebraska's second congressional district. I think right now Democrats do hold a nice a little bit of a lead here, which just does show. But now the most important part of this election, the three most important states, the Rust Belt, I think right now Donald Trump does hold a lead in all three of them. He does hold a less than 2% chance, less sorry, a less than 2% margin in all three of them. And these models also agree with me, 1.5%. Uh, 2.8% and 2.9%. As we can see here, the polls also agree with me. Donald Trump does have leads in all of them. Wisconsin is tied, but if we go to the five-way race, we can see that Trump is up by 0 0.6. And that's gonna be the map right now that I have, 312 to 226. I think Donald Trump right now is at his, one of his highest, best points. And I think he's gonna start to eye up states like Minnesota and Virginia, maybe even the states of New Hampshire and Maine to a lesser extent. He will be campaigning. I actually know that he is going to be campaigning in the state of Virginia, which is very interesting to see the least. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll check you guys out in the next video.